everyone is very welcome and uh, we thank God for your lives. Remember the story behind this message, Cornelius' house. There is a man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a Roman centurion. One day he decided to enter into prayer and fasting. And as he was praying, an angel of the Lord showed up and told him to call for one Peter, Simon Peter, who is residing in uh, Joppa. So what he did is that he sent, uh, this was, uh, he was a Roman centurion, a military man. He sent two of his servants to go and call Peter to come in. Peter uh, came in and uh, a whole revival is organized in Peter's, I mean Cornelius' house. Cornelius had invited the friends and colleagues and everyone around to come and listen to this man of God, Peter, that is coming. So Peter came and uh, he started talking about Jesus Christ. So for the past three weeks, we have been hearing the message, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ from the mouth of Peter. Everything that is transpiring in the house of Cornelius is all about salvation. Salvation of souls is number one priority of Almighty God. Hear me. Salvation of souls is the number one priority of Almighty God. The reason you don't have to struggle to understand this is because Jesus Christ was released just and mainly for that purpose, that people will be saved. People will be saved. That is the reason why Jesus Christ came here, live a life that, set, that is set as an example life for every child of God to follow the steps of our Lord Jesus Christ. His death, his resurrection, it is all unto the purpose of the salvation of mankind. So that is why I said that, you know, salvation of souls is the number one priority of Almighty God. And that as children of God, we shouldn't play with that because when you are in, when God had brought you in and you are saved, you have to be mindful of where you used to be that there might be someone and there is someone and there are many people out there that are not having it as you have it. People that are not saved. The church must stand because it is the battle, the greatest battle against mankind. Greatest battle against mankind is the salvation of souls because it is the most important, you know, element, important a program plan of Almighty God for His people, His children all over the world to be saved. For that reason, Jesus Christ was released. So Satan and his, you know, organization structure, you name it, it is they are they they are organized to fight that purpose of God. So whichever way that anyone's life will be perished in the sense that the person will not come to know our Lord Jesus Christ and die and not be saved. Satan is very happy about it because that is all that he wants, number one. And number two, even though he is not in control of hell because hell, God created hell and God, he is the owner of hell. He is the manager of hell as well. Satan is not. But he will be happy to see that he had been able to drag so many people with him into hell. Which is not something that God is, is happy about it. So when we talk about salvation of souls as Cornelius, you know, you have to also see it how important it is. This is the book of Acts. This is the book of Acts. Jesus Christ has been glorified not too long ago. And the church and everything else is going on at the same time. 
everything that we are talking about here is Act 10. It is so, you know, it is the beginning of the church and all this stuff. Power has been released and you have to see what, what is truly happening here. To the extent that an, a, 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 a non-Jew, a non-Jew, the Lord is shifting everything that people have known up to this point. Peter himself wouldn't have gone to Cornelius' house if God did not send, you know, the vision to Peter and tell Peter that I have sent people to come for you. Don't resist them. Go with them. They are from me. Peter would be, her, you know, he would have been like, no, 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 no. I cannot go to a Roman centurion's house. I am a Jew and I don't eat anything that is unclean and, and, and common and all that. But God said, I made all people. I am the God of all people. I am the God of all nations. I do not despise and all, et cetera, et cetera. So that all this statement that God has been, you know, making, these statements are all part of the heart of God to save souls. And that must be the heart of the church as well. That must be the heart, our hearts, starting from our own children, our own families, and the people that are out there. You know anyone in your family that is not saved, you have to pray for such a person. You, you have to make it a point, very serious point, to pray for such a person. Some of them, they are way, I mean, half converted, half saved. Some are not saved. Some are standing on at the pulpit, but they are not saved. Remember the story about Nicodemus. Nicodemus was, uh, he, he, you know, he, 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 was, he was a Pharisee, you know, a religious person who was not saved, who, you know, sneaked himself and uh, came to Jesus Christ. And when the Lord was talking about, you need to be born again, seriously? You are standing as a, as, as a so-called a man of God. And the Christ Jesus is telling you, one day I'm going to talk about it. Jesus is telling you that you need to be born again. It means that you are not saved. You are not saved. He said, how can I be born again? Can I enter in the second time in my mom's womb? And, you know, and, and the Lord was talking. So, you know, it, it is so, so, so important for one to have in mind that your household, your children, Everyone, your loved ones, they shall all come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. The church is doing everything. We are doing everything we can for people to be saved. And I was saying this, that God had sent Peter to Cornelius' house, a Roman centurion who was fasting and praying, and an angel of the Lord showed up and told him that he need to call for a man who is in the city called Joppa, the man, Peter, to come and he has something to tell them. Peter came and Peter started preaching salvation message to Cornelius' house. So he talked about how Jesus Christ came and lived a life, how Jesus Christ was crucified, how Jesus Christ died and Jesus was resurrected. Peter told them all these that these people knew about it, but they didn't know that that was the message that the angel of God wanted them to hear. So, Peter had explained so many things. We're going to go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10, and the verse is 42. Cornelius' house, part 5. Acts chapter 10, verse 42. It says that, when Jesus Christ died and resurrected, remember last Friday, he said, God Almighty appointed certain people to see the resurrected Jesus. Not everybody saw Jesus Christ, but group of people were selected by Almighty God to see the resurrected Jesus. And Peter was among them. Peter is one of them. So Peter is saying that, you know, when we saw Jesus, when the resurrected Jesus came, one of the things that he told them is that he commanded us, the us meaning the people that saw him, Act 10, 42. Jesus commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God 
to be the judge of quick and dead. Somebody should say amen for me. Okay, so this one here is very, very important. Jesus Christ commanded them to preach. The same message that is being preached today because the commandment is also upon me today to let mankind know that Jesus Christ, it is he who was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. New century version of the same scripture, 10, Acts 10, 42. He say, it says, Jesus told us to preach to the people and tell them that he is the one whom God chose to be the judge of the living and the dead. To be the judge of the living and the dead. So you see, I was saying this last, last Friday. Either you believe in Jesus Christ or you don't believe in Jesus you will still face the judgment of Jesus. This is so important. That is why salvation message is not an option. Salvation, salvation being saved is not an option. You must make, you must, and you must make the decision to be saved. Because either you accept Jesus or you deny Jesus, you are still going to face the judgment of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are still going to face the judgment of our Lord Jesus Christ. So why would you want to position yourself on the losing side? Why wouldn't you position yourself on the victory side so that that day you will have the confirmation of your victory? Why would you decide not to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? When Almighty God, Friday we talk about it, nobody appointed God to be God. No one disappointed God out of the, that throne as well. God is God by himself. You came to find God. You came to even find yourself that you are a human being. You came to find yourself in the family that you were born into. You came to find your parents. You grew up to know yourself to be who you are. But nothing of you that is of you. You didn't create yourself. So when it comes to what God had ordained about Jesus Christ being the judge of the living and the dead, you have no hand in it. It is not something that you can change. So it's a fact. It's a decision that you will face. Either you believe it or not, you will face it. That is a fact. Why? Because God, the sovereign God, the almighty God, had established it that way. So it is, not, it is not going to be wisdom for one to position himself in a, some kind of a, you know, hardness of heart and be battling against such statement, the scripture of Almighty God, the ordination of Almighty God. Ordain meaning ordination. It is something that is established. You cannot change it. You don't even have the ability to change it. Who are you anyway? So, everything that God had put in place, it is for us to come to accept that God wants to save your life. God wants to save your life. He wants to save your home. He wants to save your children. So, this is the message. The preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is to let people know that salvation is not a choice. Salvation is not a choice. Salvation is life. Salvation is is life. Living to be saved, making the decision to follow our Lord Jesus Christ and be saved one day is life. It's not a choice. It's not like you have a choice. You don't have a choice. But God will not force you. You know, listen to this. As much as it is not a choice, God will not force you because you have to make a decision. So the, the fact that you are going to make a decision, it is letting you believe that you have a choice but you don't because at the end of the day you will you will face the the judge no matter what decision you will make if you decide that you are not coming to accept jesus christ as your lord and savior which might seem like your own decision but your decision will judge you because you will face him so it is not like you know you 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 you, you have made a decision 
to accept him and, uh, and, 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 and that is my choice. No, 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 no. Salvation is not a choice. Salvation is God's choice for mankind. The Lord wants everybody to be saved. You can decide not to be saved, which is fine. Which means that you have chosen to go to hell. Heaven and earth. I mean, heaven and earth created by God. Hell also is created by God. As far as hell is heaven is concerned, it's a choice. It's a choice. But not salvation. Salvation is not a, cho a choice because salvation, the end of salvation is judgment. Judgment is definitely not a choice. Judgment is definitely not, not a choice. But life decision is a choice. Life decision is a choice. But at the end of life decision, you're going to face the judge. You're going to face the judge. So which means that as much as, you know, I keep repeating myself, it seems like, oh, I have decided not to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. That is my choice. Okay, it is your choice. God had already chosen that you're going to face the judge anyway. Either you reject him or not. When you have made the decision not to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are deciding where you want to be between hell and heaven. The period. Not about Jesus. Not about Jesus. It's about your spiritual standing to eternity. Amen and amen. These are serious business. These are very serious, very, very serious messages. The preaching of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ supposed to be that which we must be preaching at all times because we want people to be saved. And that was that, was that which was commanded to Peter and everyone else that saw the resurrected Jesus. Everyone that saw the resurrected Jesus, Jesus commanded them, go preach this type of message to my people that they have to be saved. Amen and amen. Let us move on. Act chapter 10 verse 43. It says, to him, give all the prophets witness. To Jesus, give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. You see that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So you can tell that the choice of life is yours. The choice of life is yours. If you decide to make Christ your decision of life, there is a reward which is remission of sins. Your sins will be forgiven. In other words, you are making the choice of your spiritual state, your eternal standing. You are making the choice either you want to be with our Lord Jesus Christ in heaven or you want to be without Jesus Christ in hell. In hell. So this is it. In the New Century Version of the Act 10, 43, he said, all the prophets say it is true that all who believe in Jesus will be forgiven of their sins through Jesus' name. So if you don't believe in Jesus, what does it mean? It means that your sins are not before, going to be forgiven. According to this scripture here, this is the word of God, not man's word. It is as simple as that. That is why I said that it doesn't seem like you really have a choice for salvation. Because there are only two places that man can be. After death. Even though many don't believe it because no one had died and come back to testify of, the, of this that we are saying. The only one that died and came back to testify that which, and this is what I'm preaching to you. The one who died and came back and was able to talk about what is beyond death. Is the one that has commanded us to preach this message to you. So if you are debating your choice of Jesus Christ, please, you are fighting a lost battle. You are fighting a lost battle. The enemy is attacking your life that way. He doesn't want you to be saved. If you don't accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is not a threat, by the way. This is not God trying to make you, you know, to be afraid or God is trying to condemn you or God is trying to, oh, if you don't do this like a policeman with a, no, 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 no. God is telling you that judgment is awaiting for you. 
And this, this one here is such an amazing law. Um, it is only the one that wants you to be saved that will tell you the truth. It is only the one that wants to save you that will tell you the truth. And you must accept that truth as, as it is. Because if you don't, your sins remain. If you don't, your sins remain. And the enemy is telling you, what sin have I committed? I'm a good person. And that is what I just said, that it's not about you. It is about what you came to find. And it is about what you are born into. It is about so many things of your life that you are not in control. And one of them is that you are born as a sinner. And another one is that you are also born to make a decision of either you want to be, remain a sinner or you want your sins to be forgiven. Amen. This is it. Life is a choice. Life is a choice. But judgment is not your choice. Life is a choice. But judgment is not a choice. So you can, re you can decide to reject the one that is going to judge you. But your rejection of the one that is going to judge you, in other words, when you, you have decided not to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God doesn't have any problem with that. But the fact is that the one that you rejected is still going to judge you. And he will judge you with righteous jud judgment. It is not because you did not accept him as your Lord and Savior that he is going to judge you and put you in hell. Absolutely not. It is because he had already given you the choice of life when you are alive here to hear the word of God that tells you that this is how it works. So that day you cannot see Jesus Christ as a partial God. You cannot see Jesus as a God that is not judging righteously. He is good. He wants you to be saved. That is the reason why he's talking to you this way and telling you that this is what is awaiting for you. Now that you have the opportunity to make the right decision, make it now, my son. Make that decision now, my daughter, and let your sins be forgiven. And one day, you're going to be with me. You'll be in heaven because that's where I am. Amen and amen. amen. To God alone be the glory. He said all the prophets, none of them, Every one of them testify of this statement. Every one of them testified it. They all preached that Jesus Christ is the solution. It is through the name of Jesus Christ that there is salvation. There is no other way, but there is only one way. That way is Jesus. That's it. That's it. Good. What a powerful message that Peter is preaching. So listen to this. In Acts 10, verse 44, the word says, While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. He said, Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. New century says, while Peter was still saying this, the Holy Ghost came down on all those who were listening. To God alone be the glory. Hallelujah. You see how powerful the, 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 the gospel, the salvation message is. Remember where Peter is preaching. Remember to whom Peter is preaching. Peter is preaching to Gentiles. Peter is preaching to Cornelius, a Roman centurion who had not, you know, who know God, who has been giving alms and a good person and all that, but had not heard the salvation message, had not made the decision, had not known about Jesus Christ in a deep way that Peter is preaching. And by the time when Peter was saying these things, the same way, somebody might be out there who is not saved. At the hearing of my voice, the same thing that happened to Cornelius' house, house had just happened to someone's life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same way that when the message was preaching to Cornelius' house, and the people received the Holy Ghost, he said, Holy Ghost fell on them. So it is. Everyone that will hear this message, who is not saved, I know the Holy Ghost will fall on you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. The Holy Ghost. 
Okay, now, let's really mark a pause and talk about it. These people, they are not Jews. These people, especially Cornelius, now Holy Ghost, had descended in the midst of these people. So, we, 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 we're going to have to talk about it. So, now, let me advance a little bit. In Acts 10 45, we just read that when Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Ghost came down on all those who were listening. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. They of circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The word circumcision were the Jews, the Jews, the believers, they, they that have believed in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So he said that the people that came, remember when Peter was coming from Joppa to Cornelius' house, people followed him. Other Jews followed him. People that were with Peter, they followed Peter to Cornelius' house. So everything that was happening when Peter was preaching in the house, these people were all also sitting down there. And suddenly, they witnessed the outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon these Gentiles. Amen and amen. They witnessed that. And the Bible says that they were astonished. Why were they astonished? Astonished meaning beyond surprise. Astonished meaning beyond surprise. They were just amazed by seeing the Holy Ghost also coming on people that are not Jews. Also coming on people that were not, that, you know, so you can see that suddenly everything that these people have been thinking of all this, everything, their whole world has been shifted, their heart has been shifted, their vision has been shifted, everything. They thought that God was only their God. The God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. That they have been, you know, we are under Moses and the law and everything else. These people sitting down there and then realizing that the power of the Holy Ghost that came on them, the same power had descended on they that are not calling God of Isaac, Jacob and Abraham. Isn't that amazing? What a wonderful thing that had happened there. They were astonished. To God alone be the glory. So the new century of Acts 10 45 says, He said, The Jewish, the Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit had been given even unto the nations. Even unto the nations. Okay, I said we're going to talk about it and we have to talk about it because. The gift of the Holy Ghost has been given. So, Act 10 46, he said, Act 10 46, the gift has been given, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Okay, they heard them speak in tongues and they started magnify God. Who are they? Cornelius House people. Cornelius, all these Gentiles, all these people, some of them have, they have come because Cornelius invited them. So you can see other, other soldiers as well, other generals, you know. Cornelius, a Roman centurion, you can tell the type of friends he has. And you can tell also about his household. Do you remember that Cornelius household, the people that work for Cornelius, and everyone in Cornelius household, they do as Cornelius do. They were all serving Cornelius God. All of them. So when Cornelius was like, please invite your friends, let them all come. You can see the type of people. All kinds of class were just right there. Cornelius Cook also invited his family and the friends. They were all there. And at the same time, Cornelius himself his colleagues, the generals, the other generals were also there. So you can tell the type of people. He said that that is why the Holy Ghost, he said that he heard the people, all of them speaking because 
God is the God of all nations. And the Holy Spirit has been given to all nations. Right there. What a wonderful God of Almighty God. The believers, they heard them speaking in different tongues. This is Cornelius, I mean, this is Act 10 for the 6 in Cornelius' house. These believers heard them speaking in different tongues, New Century Version, different languages, and praising God. Then Peter said, Act 10 47, can any man forbid water that this should not be baptized? which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. Can any man forbid water? New Century says, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? Can any man keep these people from being baptized with water? All the Gentiles that were there, Holy Ghost had descended, the gift had been given. And these people, you have, to, you have to imagine. People were there and they were wondering what is happening. Cornelius Cook, his family and his friends. We can say that even the families, the families are because, you know, he, 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 he serves in Cornelius' house. Therefore, he had also trained his family to, to pray and all that. But the friends, the friends, people that have come for the first time, people that were invited to just, he said, a man of God is coming. They don't know much about Jesus Christ. They don't know much about gospel. And they have come. And as they came, Holy Ghost descended on these people. And someone finding himself speaking in an unknown tongue. And be wondering, he said, ah, what is happening to me? What is happening to me? What is happening to me? Peter, the, not only the Jews themselves were astonished. But also the other nation, the people that have not known God, who had received the Holy Spirit instantly, speaking in unknown language, they themselves, is also beyond astonishment. They are beyond it. So what, 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 what is going on? They are not in control of a language that they are speaking. And it is happening. Peter, can anyone forbid these people from being baptized. Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we did. God had brought them at the same level as the circumcision people. This is it. So, what is it that Peter is going to do? Act 10 48. He said, Then Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed. Then prayed. They him to tarry certain days. Pray they him to tarry certain days. New century says, so Peter ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Why would you let him go? Why would you let him go? Amen and amen. amen. What they have experienced in that house that day, it's something that is beyond. Peter said, I have to move on. They said, oh, don't move on. Stay a little bit with us. Stay a little bit. Not, you know, Bible is talking about few days. Few days. We want you to be around. What, you know, what is that? The taste. The taste. The taste. They are now testy, testy of God, testy of the word of God. That is what salvation does to one. You see, so now, you know, when people are hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, something might happen to someone at the hearing of the gospel. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will arrest someone's life. This is so interesting because he said, when you have preached and they have believed, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But when the word had gone forth, 
and they have received the Holy Spirit. It is also telling us the work that the Holy Ghost is doing in the world out there. How people come to be saved. The, this, these steps are the same steps that everyone is following. This is not unique to Cornelius' house. This is how people come to be saved. This is how people come to salvation. Pastor Charles, what are you saying? I am saying how God works in bringing his people into salvation. Do you know, for the people in Cornelius' house, Cornelius invited them to come and hear the gospel. Whichever way that God is opening one's life to the hearing of the gospel, the salvation of one soul is always from the hearing of the gospel. The salvation of one soul is always from the hearing of the gospel. How can they believe if there have not been one to preach? So, in order for faith to be generated, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. So, it is always the same process. That is why somebody will be on the internet watching YouTube message and the Lord will arrest such person. When I say the Lord will arrest such person, meaning that the Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost, the same Holy Ghost that did the same work in Cornelius' house will do exactly the same thing in that person's house, including today and as of today. That is how God is working. The Holy Spirit, the greatest ministry of the Holy Spirit as of today is that the Holy Spirit is in the world out there convicting people of sin, convicting souls of sin. In other words, he is looking for avenues whereby people will be exposed to the word of God. And one is coming to be convicted that, you know what, this whole bottle activity that I have been undertaking for all these years, it is time for me to stop and give my life to our Lord Jesus Christ. And one way or another, the Lord will make a way to save such a person's life. Amen and amen. This is to tell you that your actions out there are very, very supreme for God. Extremely important for Almighty God. Somebody might just be hearing you talking about Jesus. Talking about your church and how, you know, gospel it had saved your life and all that and bring someone to salvation. At the end of the day, it is not you. It is about that which the Holy Ghost is using you to do. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. That is why we can never, as a church, we can never, never take for granted the salvation, the platform that we must build to bring the souls of God. It is not for our churches to be filled. That is not what we are saying. But all that we are saying is that God had ordained us to let his gospel known so that people will come at the, you know, at the generation of faith through the, the ministry of the gospel to them. Amen and amen. When we preach, it generates faith. When you talk to someone about God, it generates faith. Because the Holy Spirit that is with you, it's also definitely doing a work in that person's life. No matter, and, and, and that is one thing you have to watch. You have to watch because as Peter, as much as Peter would never have made a step to Cornelius' house, you probably is also thinking the same way that this person, the lifestyle of this person is not someone that I really want to come close to. This, this is not the type of house that I will enter. The same thing. Think twice. Think twice. That doesn't mean that you have to throw yourself to the, the lion's den. Wisdom must be there. Where you are not supposed to go, don't go. But the leadership of the Holy Ghost in you, you will know that God wants you to speak a word of God to such a person to bring the person to salvation. Amen and amen. amen. To God alone be the glory. Baptism, baptism, baptism. Baptism is another thing that we have to talk about it. You see, you see, once they are saved and the Holy Ghost, you know, so you can tell that the first thing that happens to one when the person is brought to salvation is the presence of the Holy Ghost. 
when one is saved, the first thing that comes from the person is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The word of God went forth. It generated faith. The Holy Ghost, they sent on that person's life. The person is no more the same person. Because now the person has the spirit of Almighty God. When they come around, what must we do? We must baptize them and tell them, sit down. You see, these people, they didn't want Peter to go because they were thirsty of the word of God. The same thing after we have baptized them, we tell them, sit down and be filled with the word of God. This house, you are going to eat and eat and eat and eat God's food until you have never had enough because it is never enough to hear the word of God. Amen and amen. Which means that our baptism pool, we definitely have to build it. Amen and amen. We have been baptizing people in our own uh, little stuff that we have done. Now God has given us uh, a whole building, a huge parking and everything else. We have the space. We have a room right here back at the sanctuary. We are going to build a baptism pool. And if you are around and you have not been baptized, you have to let us know because we already have the, you know, the, the, the facility to baptize you even before the real pool is built. But to God alone be the glory. May the Lord bless his word in you. In Jesus' name, let's say amen. Amen.